Like many of us, I've always had a difficult relationship with my phone. On one hand, I despise how social media apps can suck me in while I get no real enjoyment or meaning out of them most of the time. Even besides that, sometimes I'm looking for separation from always being connected to the outside world, and the onslaught of text, email, or social media notifications becomes too overwhelming for me. Not only that, but social media, TikTok, YouTube, all that can keep me in bed way longer than I want to be. My tired brain can always seem to convince itself, hey, just go on TikTok for a little bit, that'll wake you up, and without fail, every time, it takes a Herculean effort to pull me out of it and actually get up. On the other hand, I don't want to lose contact with those closest to me in the case of something time sensitive. Not to mention, I work from home and need to be able to pick up when my boss or a coworker is trying to contact me. Also, I do find many aspects of my phone incredibly useful. Timers, alarms, notes, music, meditation app, things that I do use to improve my life or bring meaning to it. In the past, I've done many things to bring as much intention to my phone usage as possible, but I've always had to strike a middle ground between removing distractions and giving myself the option for those distractions at the appropriate time, striking a balance between being always connected and being able to step away from texts and calls when I need to feel more grounded. So today, I'm taking a new approach to try to strike this balance. Recently, I switched cell providers, which gave me the opportunity to get a new phone. I upgraded from the second generation iPhone SE to an iPhone 13 mini. I really loved my SE. It was a great balance between minimalist and reliable. I would have kept it for as long as I could as it was showing no signs of wear or slowing down after two years. So I decided to keep it and turn it into my light phone. Okay, the name is a bit of a work in progress. I'm also considering diet phone or phone zero. Let me know if you can think of anything better. Basically, I'm stripping this down to almost nothing. I am removing any app that I would consider overly distracting. I am leaving texting and calling, which I can still get over Wi-Fi, but with very restrictive notifications. I wanna focus on leaving apps and functions that would help promote mindfulness and helping me feel grounded. I'm hoping I can use these two different phones to switch back and forth between them in my life, depending on what I'm trying to focus on. This light phone will hopefully give me the opportunity to detach as much as I can from the connected world but without having to permanently give up the rest of the functions on my other phone. Here is how I last left my phone about a month ago. Now it is time for the great app purge. I'm just going to start by pretty much deleting everything that I don't want. This is gonna feel insane. Okay, okay. This feels almost wrong. Yeah, that's crazy. I don't even know how many apps were on my phone last, but we are down to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten apps. Jesus. Yeah. This is quite a difference. Now that I've changed my wallpaper to something a little calmer and more minimalist, let me walk you through what's on here. On top of these 10 apps on my home screen, I still have all the default Apple apps, but tucked away to the side in the app library. I left my notes app for thought dump purposes, but primarily if I need a big old thought dump, I have the tendency to film myself, uh, just kind of talking and saying whatever's at the top of my head. It's super therapeutic and great for blowing off steam and feeling reset. I want to be able to set my regular phone aside at night and keep this one next to me while I sleep instead. So I left my clock app to use for my alarm. YouTube and Disney Plus both have some content on them that I like to fall asleep to. I'm going to try to limit myself to only one streaming service on this phone at a time. But Headspace was the primary inspiration for wanting to have a more dedicated device to mental wellness. I wanted to be able to use the app for meditation, but without notifications distracting me before and after meditating. Those distractions would really harsh my mellow. This app is great for sleep, too. It has a lot of nighttime meditations and music that I plan on using for sleep at night. EMDR tappers. Well, I am not going to explain what EMDR is right now. Go look it up. But with this app, I can use this phone and my regular phone in connection with each other to alternate vibrating lightly. I hear it's very soothing and could be nice while meditating. I'm excited to give it a try. And the audio apps are just to be able to connect this phone to my wireless earbuds and speaker for music. Music. 
if I want to listen to music. As for calling and texting, I can still access iMessage and phone through the app library. At the moment, their notifications are turned off, but I can turn them on if I want to try ditching my regular phone to remove all digital distractions from my life for a period of time while still being able to communicate regularly. Ta-da! For the next couple weeks, I will be implementing this phone into my daily life and figuring out where it fits best with it, like I said. Um, being able to use it at nighttime and in the mornings for meditation and even just when I need to set my regular phone aside, not get distracted by excessive notifications or anything like that and just kind of feel a little bit more grounded and a little bit more detached for just a little bit of time. I think this is going to make a huge improvement on my life, just having that option when I want it. So let's see how it goes. So I immediately noticed that iMessage and calling is a mess. For whatever reason, texts were being forwarded to me several days late. In these past few weeks of me using the light phone, not one text was forwarded to my phone at the same time as my regular phone or any of my other Apple devices. Also, for no discernible reason, not all phone calls were coming through. When the anxiety over feeling disconnected started bubbling up, I considered some minimalism guidance over intentional phone usage that I've heard in the past. Do I always need to be on, able to be contacted at any waking second? No, I have the right and the agency to set my own limits with my own devices. But what if someone's trying to contact me in an emergency? Oh, come on, no one's trying to contact me. Besides, what people consider an emergency is so rarely an emergency anyway. I decided to deal with the technical issues at another time, shrug off the worry that everybody's trying to contact me, and see if the other functions of my light phone would prove themselves useful. As I said before, this whole idea originated when I wanted to be able to use a device for my meditation app without seeing distracting notifications before and after the meditation. Now that I'm using the light phone for opening up Headspace, just that little bit of buffer where I can disconnect has been adding an extra layer of calm. It's hard to describe other than saying it gives me confidence, confidence that I have truly stepped away and I don't have to worry about whatever notification is coming next, that I can take my time in reconnecting with the world if I need to. I tried the EMDR Tappers app where I use both phones in conjunction with each other. They alternate vibrating in your hand, which is supposed to simulate the same part of your brain as REM sleep, going back and forth from left to right, but honestly, I didn't end up getting much use out of this. The app's a little annoying to set up and the vibration can be inconsistent, so I just kind of stopped using it. I've recorded a couple thought dumps on my light phone too. It's amazing how much more at ease I am knowing that it's okay if I drain the battery because I don't need it for anything else, that it's okay that these 20 minute long videos are taking up all the space on my phone, and if I'm getting a call while I'm doing this, I don't have to fumble around in a panic to be able to answer. But I tell you, the way this phone has made the biggest difference in my life is when I am going to bed and when I'm waking up. My How I'm Getting Better Sleep video goes into more depth with this. I use my light phone for my nighttime meditation and playing music while I carry out my routine. When I get into bed, yes, watching a YouTube video or show can really help me get to sleep by giving my mind something to focus on, but now I am completely incapable of becoming distracted by other notifications or worse, endlessly browsing social media. I've limited my options to just what I have to help me fall asleep and mornings are even better. I can still use this phone as my primary alarm, but without all the other distractions attached to it. I can wake up with similar confidence I mentioned with meditation, that I have no work emails, no missed calls, nothing that will immediately put me into a fluster. Emails and calls may await me, but I have no obligation to think or respond to them so early in the morning. I cannot tell you how good it felt to be in control of when and how I was allowed to receive notifications or be distracted. It's my decision when my my regular phone gets turned on in the morning, never before getting out of bed. That was physically impossible. Sometimes I'd even ride that feeling of calm, the disconnection brought me, and wait up to an hour after waking up before turning it on for the day. To me, this act of resistance was no less than a big fuck you to this culture that's normalized always being connected. But of course, there is always the chance that somebody could be trying to contact me, like, in case of an emergency or 
not even that, maybe even something more positive, like a friend of mine wants to spontaneously hang out or something. Again, the original plan here was to be able to disconnect from distractions more easily and turn on and off the ability to get texts and calls or check them voluntarily. Trying to figure out the latency issues with the text forwarding and Wi-Fi calling got me nowhere. Turns out, no one else on the internet is trying to turn their old device into a light phone. My absolute best guess was maybe it was still trying to connect to the old cell provider. I was about to go out on a limb to take out the SIM card of my new phone, put it in the old one, connect to the new provider, and swap it back just to see if that would do, I don't know, anything? Something? It was then I had to ask myself, would going through all this trouble really be worth it? To have calling and texting for these just-in-case circumstances, to have these functions that if I'd be actively trying to disconnect, I probably wouldn't have turned on anyway. This just simply was not worth it. And you know what? I've left my phone in the other room plenty of times, and all that's missed is maybe some texts about future plans, my family texting about the weather, some of the memes that my wife is sending me from the next room over, or some weird panels from 90 Spider-Man comics my friend likes to send me. That is if I even have texts. And besides, who even calls anymore? You know what? As long as I check my phone every once in a while, and my phone's only off during the hours of oh, 10 p.m. and 8.30 a.m., I see no reason for concern. Besides, most emergencies aren't real emergencies, right? 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 And that, honey, is why I personally felt Avatar The Way of Water was better than the original. Having just got back from a late showing of it in IMAX 3D, I can also say the second time I saw it was far better than the first. Though I am disappointed I wasn't able to catch a 48 frames per second screening. Which, you know, kind of begs the question, for everybody that saw it in only 24 frames per second, did they only see half a movie? Huh, <laughs> well that will make a fun conversation for a film class one day. Anyway, for now, it's late. I'd better get some sleep. You'd better get some sleep too, dear. You have work in the morning. You wouldn't want to oversleep because I was up so late talking with you about Avatar The Way of Water, would you? <laughs> Well, uh, good night, darling. Hey, honey, is everything okay? Oh my, oh my god. Yeah, I know, I'm sorry, I, I overslept and my phone was off and... Yeah, four missed phone calls from your wife is not what you want to see upon first turning your phone on for the day. Luckily, my inability to answer the phone didn't cause any active harm to the situation she was in. In the grand scheme of things, and from the perspective of a lot of those minimalism and self-development voices, this was not an emergency. Maybe to me it wasn't, but to my wife, it was. I wasn't there for the most important person in my life. Not only was I unable to give her support in a time that she needed it, but my phone going straight to voicemail caused more anxiety to the situation than necessary. I don't even want to think about what this situation could have become if the circumstances were more dire. The fact is, I live in a connected world, for better or worse. While I believe I have the right to take agency over how connected I am, my frustration with always being on led me to feel like the only way to avoid my phone's distractions was to turn off completely. Maybe things would have been different if my light phone had worked as intended, giving me the ability to receive calls and texts in the moment without other apps distracting me. But I learned that there was a middle ground solution available to me this entire time, something I've started doing during the times in which I imagined originally using my light phone in. disturb.
confirm only calls from contacts I've designated will filter through and will be able to reach me. Somewhere I can hear it, but just out of reach to not get sucked into doom scrolling or mindlessly checking notifications. Yeah, the solution was that simple the entire time. So does this mean my light phone has no place in my life? Absolutely not. Like I said, this thing has transformed my nights and mornings, and that little bit extra distance while I'm using it for more mindful activities does allow for a greater sense of grounding and peace. But the biggest thing I took away from these past couple weeks is just how beneficial disconnecting from distractions can be, and the far simpler steps needed to do so that don't even require a second phone. I'm gonna take a couple tries. This is dangerous. I'm doing it anyway. Did I just get that on the first try?